I'm a senior system engineer at Pessler, and I'd like to tell you something about network monitoring, about Pessler, the company, um, and about, of course, Pierre de Chi, our product. So, first of all, um, the agenda. The, the first step is the company. I will tell you something about how we do and how we see things. And uh, the next interesting question might be, um, why do I need monitoring, right? We will talk about the evolution of monitoring. Um, I added a special showcase um, for the virtualization environment, especially um, with VMware. Some technical background which is necessary for um, the live demo, which comes next. So in total, um, the presentation itself will be about 30 minutes, okay? And the live demo, the other 30 minutes. If you have questions at any time, don't ask, no, just joking. <laughs> Go for it, interrupt me, slow me down, feel comfortable. If you have any special questions, which I, I'm not able to answer right now, hmm? I've gummy bears for you. <laughs> <laughs> so is anybody familiar with uh, network monitoring? Yes. yes, first answer, first answer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. Okay, there we go. Any questions right now? Not yet. <laughs> Good. Well, um, a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, oh, that was a movie, right? Pierre de G, um, a one-man show. Well, our CEO, Dirk Pessler, had a great idea. He wanted to create an easy-to-use and powerful monitoring solution. I think he had no idea how big this will become in the future. But anyway, there he is. This is Dirk Pesler. So he's still working with us together. And in the meanwhile, means almost 20 years later, his idea grew and so his company. So he's still on board. And it's working closely together with us, okay? So the headquarter itself is in Nuremberg. Where the hell is Nuremberg? That's easy. We have the, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there's the universe, the planets, the sun, the solar flares, the moon, the earth. We have Europe, of course. Um, there's um, Germany, there's Bavaria, there's Franconia. Uh -huh. And in the middle of the universe, we have um, Nuremberg. There we go. Are you guys interested in a short clip about Pessler, about the team at Pessler, about the way we are? It's a very short one, about 30 seconds. Okay. We needed more space in there, therefore we moved to a new headquarter. Um, something about the company itself. Well, staff 170 people still counting from different, well, from 30 different nationalities. The company itself is 100% um, owned by the funders and employees. So we're free and we're independent. Um, development, support, marketing, IHR, everything is concentrated in the headquarter in Nuremberg. Um, of course, we have um, international teams, for example, the U.S. sales team and the U.S. pre-sales team and so on for North America and for the North American market. Um, we're talking about 15 years of 25 to about 60 percent um, constant annual growth and more than 150,000 installations worldwide. Um, the interesting thing also, and those who 
have been to um, the presentation of Ben in, in the U.S. know about it. Uh, more than 70% of the Fortune 100 companies um, use PRDG worldwide. Okay? And we have, of course, authorized partners all over the globe. We also made it in somehow into Gardner's Magic Quadrant. Um, it is interesting that Gardner, as the world's leading information technology research and advisory company, has acknowledged Pessler um, and our monitoring solution in the Magic Quadrant. And we're really honored to be positioned there alongside several large enterprise solutions like um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, um, Riverbed, Cisco, and as well, SolarWinds. Huh? I have no idea what it really means, but it's impressive in somehow, okay? So the question right now is, um, what the hell is it? What is, what is he talking about? What is network monitoring? How and so on? Well, another short um, video which should help for a better understanding. That's the monitoring, the final frontier. Hardware, virtual environments, applications, clouds, and it all has to be monitored. Don't get lost in outer space with thousands of specialized monitoring solutions from different vendors. There exists one solution to monitor them all. PRDG Network Monitor. It's the solution to help you keep control over your entire IT universe. It's easy to set up so you have time to explore new worlds, seek out new technology, and boldly go into your next projects. Start exploring PRDG by downloading the trial now. So the question is still, why do I need PRDG? Why do I need a network monitoring solution, right? Because the quick answer is, it's the ultra premium safety boost for your infrastructure, right? It's installed within two minutes on the Windows system. And more importantly, it saves your ass forever. The way we do, it's like, um, George S. Patton once said, if everyone is thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking. So we do it our way, in a, often in a very different way. I mean, we don't copy things the others do. We do it our way, okay? We always try to go um, far beyond the expectations. Continuous rollout, what does it mean? Um, the primary goal of Pessler is to serve customers as well as we can. This, um, these are the words from Dirk Pessler. And on the technological side, um, this means providing new features, support new technologies, um, frequent and quick bug fixes, and so on. To understand how we do that, we have something that we call the continuous rollout. We have three um, things, three release channels. First of all, we have the, the stable one. That's the best tested version, right? Um, updated, updated about once or twice a month. Um, this is meant for usage on live systems. We also have something that we call preview. Um, we're offering latest features and fixes. So the update interval there is um, several times a month. And we also have the canary, which you would call a nightly or daily build. So we are providing nightly builds updated very, very often, not tested extensively. So never use this in a productive environment. It doesn't make sense. But if you want to know, if, is there a new feature coming next or what is it, use the canary. For example, I will mention this later, we also have the freeware which with 100 sensors. You can use this one for testing. How does it look like? Well, compatible with many mobile devices as well as um, we have the HX web interface. The, um, the HX web interface, this web interface is um, highly interactive and is using asynchronous JavaScript and XML, which means AJAX, to uh, deliver a powerful and easy to use user experience. How does it look like? Like this. So all you need is um, a browser, right? This is the main access to PRDG. Then we have the enterprise console means access to several core servers in one console. It's a native Windows application. So if you have more than one PRDG installed, 
use, for example, the Enterprise Console. You don't have to switch between tabs in your browser. You have everything together concentrated in a native Windows app. And then, of course, we also have um, mobile apps for iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and uh, we still have the, the BlackBerry app, which is um, honestly a, a native um, Android application. We don't support it anymore, and we don't develop it anymore, but it's still there. And if you want a little bit smaller, well, of course, the variables, yeah. Um, in this example, it's a wearable iOS user interface for PRDG. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Are you able to push data uh, alerts to a device without having the application installed? Um, or you yeah. need to have the application? Yeah. We, we use push notifications, sure. If you have something like this, it's, it's obviously not an Android, it's not an iOS, it's a Pebble. Mm -hmm. um, you can use it, yes. So I get all the notifications coming directly from PRTG using push notifications to um, the variable. Do you do that in uh, PRTG? Do you have a, a way to set it up or do you leverage some uh, vendor APIs? Or? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pesla Router Traffic Graffer, which means that's an indication of a long, long time ago. Well, the monitoring was about, right, hardware, routers, switches. We still had hubs. Hmm? And... Uh, the hardware section. Well, that's why we call this um, the evolution and the evolution one was the first evolutionary step towards um, network monitoring. Next, the second step. What is it? What do you think? Virtualization. Virtualization. Absolutely right. Yes. Number three. Yes, and a little bit more. We had applications already in, in, in version 1 and 2, but it's the... Believe it or not, it's a cloud. <laughs> okay, and in the meanwhile, we have monitoring 4.0, which also means IoT and things like that. Okay? So, the interesting thing. Um, the first evolutionary step in monitoring began in the middle of the 80s. It was also the birth of um, the Simple Network Management Protocol, SNMP, right? So, um, in 1985, there were a number of groundbreaking inventions. Any ideas? A hint. Yes, Tetris. So, we also had... Um, where's the mouse? Super Mario Bros. Then we had um, the first top-level domain, the first dot-com top-level domain from Symbolics. In the meanwhile, we have more than 115 millions around the globe. And we had, oh, come on, Windows 1, which was Windows 101, um, a 16-bit OS and less than 1 megabyte overall. And you still had to run this on uh, MS-DOS 5.0, okay? It was also in 1985. And very impressive, um, the first, we can call it mobile phone, right? It's a cell phone or whatever it is. Yes. Nowadays, we have um, much more powerful hardware, right? For example, we use a PowerEdge R730 or something from Dell. So the question right now is, how do we get data out of it? Do we necessarily have to install an OS? Or is there another option? IDRAC and IPMI. Perfect. Two? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The ILO from, from HP, integrated lights out, or the IDRAC. Means we are able to get data right out of the main board. Okay? And it makes sense. So we're maybe interested in the CPU, and the hard disk, and, and RAM, and probably in much more like the the van speed, the temperature, uh, and of course, smart information. How about the hardware? How about the, the hard disk itself? I mean, of course, if you don't do monitoring, you probably don't know anything about it as long as the rate does not get degraded. Then it feels probably a little bit slow or different. Can I ask you another question? Uh, I've used Pestler six years ago, mm -hmm. and at the time I used to import my own MIP files for each vendor. Mm -hmm. Do you know I've integrated, let's say, kind of 
standard sensors that you use for monitoring the ILO, EDRAC, uh, EMM2, etc., or do you do we still have to import these uh, SNMP MIP files? Okay, a very very good question. Um, first of all, we have about 240 um, sensors right built in in PRDG. Some of them are vendor based, for example, for Dell, for HP, and so on. Okay, if you have um, a special hardware, you still have to, or you still can use the MIP importer. The MIP importer is just a tool. So you have the MIP file from the vendor, you import it into the MIP importer, and now comes the cool thing you now can export it in something that we call OID lib for OID library. You do this once and you will have it forever. So you can build your own sensors with the click of a mouse in the future. And if you go further and create your own templates, you don't have to do anything at all. It's just a auto discovery, which we will see later on, and you're ready to go. PRDG will set up all the necessary sensors. And that's a feature I loved about your product when I was a sysadmin. Yeah. It was really great to use. Thank you very much. It's totally flexible, it is. Mm -hmm. So, I thought you would ask me, what is a sensor? No? That's a good question. What is it? It should be like a probe. Uh, it's a probe, kind of a collector of information. Yes, it is something that collects data, sure. That's the sensor, for example. This is how it looks like in the HX web interface. And within this sensor, you will find something that we call channels. So if we, later we see it, if we look into the eye drag, we have tons of channels. But all together is one sensor. And to understand the licensing program, uh, the licensing, we count against sensors. Okay, so if you buy a PRTG 5000, this means you are allowed to have up to 5000 sensors, whether it's a ping sensor, it's something from the IREC, Cisco Flow, or whatever it is, we count against sensors. And then we have the XL1, with its, which, which is and somehow unlimited. Okay. What about the disk? Because uh, usually disks uh, are not, uh, you, you can direct access to disk, you have access to a controller, yeah. and uh, some controller manage all the disk, mm -hmm. so you have one sensor for the controller and multiple channel or a single sensor for a that controller. That depends on the hardware. Okay. Yeah, that depends. So um, monitoring, for example, the smart information, getting out the smart information from a hard disk will say, well, there is something going on. You have um, bad sectors or clusters and or things like that. So you do not necessarily have to wait until the rate gets degraded. Monitoring means it will save your ass. It does. So what we see here, um, it's close to your question. So this is from, from the iDrag. This is the Dell system status, the, the amps, some of the cooling devices. Maybe your um, Dell server has 20 vans, OK? And if one has a problem, you will see it there. You get a notification. So we're able to see all the details. Licenses already mentioned, we, have, we count against sensors from the 100 to the PRDG 5000, the XL1 and XL5. The difference here is, hey, Anne, hello. <laughs> can you explain no. XL1 and XL5? Well, probably not as good as you can, but I can <laughs> definitely say that the XL1 um, has unlimited sensors. Mm -hmm. um, and the XL5, you get to install five core installations of PRDG throughout the globe. So, can I ask you one thing? Uh, if I remember, uh, there, what is the scalability for one installation? Is it 5,000 sensors or 10,000 sensors per single installation? First of all, we have to understand that we, um, there's the virtual environment and that's the physical installation, okay? Um, we recommend to stay below 5,000 sensors while you're in a virtual inf uh, infrastructure. Huh? And we also recommend to set up to 10,000 sensors in a f on a physical machine without the virtualization layers in between, okay? But, but you're probably able to install, let's say, multiple, you're probably able to make multiple installations, right? Mm -hmm. And if this is the case, do you have a way to kind of monitor to have a central console with like four, five, six installations across the globe, for example? If it's okay for you, I will show you exactly this later on when we talk about remote probes, 
Okay, is it okay? Yeah. Can, I, can I ask you a question related to the architecture? Mm -hmm. So when you install a node, uh, the node has a single goal, so you just scale up by adding more, more, um, more, no more nodes with the same identical features uh, to the same, let's call it cluster, or or is that different? There is a different. Uh, uh, let me let me switch to the the remote probe, huh? So. How do we do? If you install, or when you install PRDG, you automatically install the core server as well as the local probe. The local probe itself will collect the data from your subnet or from your subnets. It's included. If you have um, a branch office, a distributed networks, a hosting provider, whatever it is, we use something that we call remote probes. They exactly do the same as the local probe does. It collects data from example here, the branch office. You install it on a Windows PC server, it doesn't matter, the remote probes are included, everything in PRG is included. That's maybe a big difference. You have to understand that we have no add-ons, it's all in. If you buy a PRG 2000, you have 2000 sensors, but you have all of them, the total flexibility. And so you're allowed to add unlimited remote probes collecting data from all over the globe, right? Okay, so next slide, multiple remote probes, obviously. Um, every, all the collected data goes directly to the core server, SSL secured, which in, is another cool feature because we only have to open one single port on the firewall side. Not multiple, like, okay, you need port 1614 SNMP, I need that for ping, I need that for flow, I need that for the VBM sensors, for, for VMware and so on, okay? This is how it goes. I'm sorry again to ask you questions, because yes. I've been working with PRTG, so that's why I'm a bit more curious than usual today. So, uh, you've explained the concept of remote probes, so of course, obviously, you can install as many remote probes as you want, but you still have to be within the limits of the supported number of uh, sensors in the architecture, right? Mm -hmm. So what if I want to scale above the 5,000 or the 10,000 that you recommend? What will, be, what will be the solution to do that in a larger environment where I need to capture a lot of things? Simply add a second PRDG installation okay. and use, for example, the Enterprise Console, Perfect. which is able to deal with all that information, okay? okay. And um, the 100 sensor version is for free lifetime okay so if you want to give it a try try it if you want to find out how many sensors do i really need in my in my infrastructure use the freeware 30 days if you need a long if you need longer no problem just drop us a line sales at pesolo.com for example there we go otherwise count about rule of thumb five up to ten sensors per device okay so next step, um, hypervisor monitoring, for example, the ESXi or um, whatever it is, Citrix Xen server was the second great evolutionary step, the virtualization. It doesn't matter. It's, it's the same information you get from the vSphere or from the vCenter. Hmm? So for example, this is about the, the host performance. It's the same as well as the host status, the host hardware status. Um, well, obviously this is German, but anyway, that's a, a screenshot from the vSphere. Yeah? We use some sub sensors, we use WBM sensors, WBM sensors, in order to get the data directly from, from the VMware environment. Do you use information from logs or from logs? And I forgot to mention the, the data store, which will look like this and the V switches and, and so on. We will see this later in the live demo, okay? And of course, we also have the virtual machines. We're interested in um, the services, processes and software and stuff like that. Here it's the vCenter monitoring with a focus on only this specific one virtual machine, right? Then do you have any plugin to vCenter? No, you don't need it. Um, there's only one thing that you can do if you want to dig deeper and if you want to get more granular details, then you probably should um, fire up the, the SNMP daemon, which isn't a big problem. 
hmm? in order to use the VMware MIP files, for example, and create your own library. But this is up to you. So one thing which is interesting about the, um, the product is that it's uh, really agnostic. It's not really bound to virtualization of VMware. It can use Kubernetes or basically everything. What we had in our data center, we even had uh, temperature sensors in one of the rooms, and we used the SNMP file. We imported it into PRTG, and we were monitoring the temperature and the humidity of the data center room, and we were just getting the information as a sensor. I don't have to tell you, we have the virtual machines and the, and the OSs, and of course the applications. So we're able to monitor all these things, like, for example, if you have your, your SQL, your Microsoft SQL, or um, your backup processes, backup software. Do you have any special events or use only VMware tools information? For what? For virtual machine operation system and application, you use any your any agent or you no, use only the other tools? We use our own sensors. We don't use agents, so we're agentless. Hmm? Does it rain in the cloud? Well, okay, you already realized that this is coming. <laughs> it's all on Windows, yes. Any question about the concept? Are you going to build something specific for network virtualization like uh, monitoring NSX, uh, uh, NSX infrastructure? So if, if there is not one specific sensor for you within the 240 we already have, if your device does not speak SNMP, then you have the chance to use your own scripts. The output should be, for example, XML, and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, contact us. If you have any questions, contact the support, for example. We also have a very, very huge and powerful knowledge base. I'm pretty sure that you will find everything you need. If not, contact. Question again, but this is more a question maybe for, uh, for David. Uh, I'm not a network guy. Uh, don't you also support uh, NetFlow? and yes, things of, of this kind? Version 5, version 9, yeah, there's, oh, let's talk about flow, it's X-flow, it's J-flow, it's HP's S-flow, and the different versions in, in, the, in the usual, in the Cisco flows, version 5 or 9, mm -hmm. so with you, very granular details. You're doing network monitoring, server monitoring, application monitoring, how are you coupling that together? So if I see my application performing slowly, is there a way to do like a tiered application to where you can see, oh, well, it's probably because of the disk or the network. If there's something going on and you, well, there's a warning state and there's a narrow state, for example, and we have something that we call unusual, the unusual detection. We will see this um, when we um, fire up the, the live demo. And I can explain it a little bit better because you, you will see what we're talking about. Is it okay Perfect. to wait for us? Okay. Well, the settings. It's, it's like a tree. Um, this is um, how we do. First of all, we have the root level. Then we have the probes as well as the remote probes. Within these probes, we have groups, for example, virtualization, uh, and subgroups, VMware, Citrix, and so on. And within these subgroups or groups, we have the devices, and there we will have the sensors. The sensor for the data store, the sensor for flow, or whatever it is and so on. And settings are inherited to child objects. We will see this. So, installation means, um, we already talked about it, within about two minutes, then you will probably run into the smart setup and auto discovery. So the auto discovery will automatically identify which devices are in this environment. And we already try to build this environment and therefore we use the smart setup so provide credentials means credentials for the windows world for the unix world um dom admin rights root rights and so on if you do this right now we're able to identify each and everything within that subnet or within all the other subnets which we can add later on so this will also cause a reinitiating process and we'll start the auto discovery again and we are fine. Finally, all 
we recommend is to um, change the um, login password, which is PRDG, PRDG admin, and PRDG admin is a password. And that's pretty much of it. Finally, switch to SSL. You don't have to, but you should for security reasons, right? Okay. So it's system is only running on Windows, right? Yes. What's, what's the specific reason for this? Is that like the history of the com company and how it's built or is it like we need Windows because... I think this has much to do with WMI stuff, which we're able to get, which helps us to get data out of the Windows world. By the way, if you have the option um, to use SNMP, use SNMP. We have light white sensors, as an MP sensor, a ping sensor, no impact on the CPU. Okay. WMI is a beast. Don't overdo. It doesn't matter whether you use our product or any other vendor on the market, which does network monitoring. Don't use WMI if you don't have to. Yeah, but for application, for Windows application, how? So we, used, um, we use WMI only to monitor very critical services, for example, if a database service is up, mm -hmm. or to check, for example, vCenter service was running up and all, but I'm speaking six years back when there were no vCSAs, when everything was running on Windows, so I mean the use case is a bit decreasing nowadays. Um, my question is still related to sizing, but more in relation to the licensing. So mm -hmm. my understanding is that you have a wide range of uh, um, possible uh, uh, sizes for licensing, right? Mm -hmm. From 3100 to 5XL. Mm -hmm. So how do you scale up the resources that the RTG needs to address more and more sensors to, to be included in the, in, in the monitoring? So do you need to scale up the scale up or scale up the servers, the, the, the bigger you go with licensing? Once you reach the limit, for example, more than 5,000 sensors and you say, I need this virtual environment hmm, for some reasons, for snapshots or for, what, for whatever reason, then we recommend to add another PDG instance, means another course of installation, but horizontally. Logically speaking, it's the same cluster. It's, from a logical perspective, two PRTG servers are part of one logical PRTG installation, right? They so, no. Um, we have two independent installations, but we can combine the information within the enterprise console and manage each and every single um, PRDG instance as one. Okay. And how do you protect the integrity and the availability of the data that is collected? Do you have any sharding? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Well, as far as the remote probes are um, concerned, for example, if your um, your DSL line drops, no connection anymore, the remote probe will still collect data from this environment. And once the, um, once the data line is back, it will transfer um, the collected data to the core server. The same with the, with the local probe, for example. Um, I forgot to mention that we also have um, a, high a high availability thing called cluster. Mm? So, um, good news, the cluster is already included in our licenses, even with a 100 sensor license, okay? So you can build up your own cluster for free. If Basically, you have to double the amount of resources allocated so that from a logical perspective, you have one instance, but you have two uh, uh, servers up and running, and in case one fails, the other one yeah, is able to... The other one takes over, okay. and as far as the remote probes are concerned, the remote probe connected to PRDG Server 1 will automatically jump to the second installation and deliver the data. This is how we do it. So do you and still have the map view? Yeah, 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 the dashboards and the map view. Yeah, we will see it within the demo. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And um, what about the licenses for a service provider? I mean, sometimes um, licenses uh, are a critical part uh, for an internet service provider because business sometimes grow up, go down. So it's um, uh, driven by the customer. <coughs> is there any form of any, any kind of license uh, that uh, is good for service provider or? If you're a service provider, you're fine and that's it. We, in, the mean, in the past, we had um, different licenses for MSP purposes. Now you're fine. 
this helps a lot. Yeah. So yeah, the question is, um, I need more detailed information used for example, the videos and webinars. You will find basic information, advanced information, um, what is the sensor, the sensor state, sensor count, the smart setup, even um, SNMP debugging or SNMP basics, which will help. You will find it here.